Let me introduce you to the largest production facility for tunnel elements in the world. For the next few years, this facility on the south coast of Lolland will be at the heart of a phenomenal logistical challenge. Here, our state-of-the-art production facility will churn out the building blocks of the world's longest immersed tunnel. The logistical challenge of feeding this vast facility with a constant flow of materials was studied in great detail. We will use a distinct method to unload and transport each material. Sand and aggregates, which represent the greatest quantities, will be unloaded via a conveyor belt system, while cement will be rapidly blown out through a pipe to nearby silos. Reinforcing bars, another key material, will be delivered by vessels. Once the materials have arrived, production can start. As we plan for a continuous production process of segments in the casting hall, our engineers decided that this will drive the overall production cycle. So, all other production activities were tuned to this heartbeat. Upstream, the rebar assembly hall is optimized to this rhythm, with three rebar stations, two adjacent pre-assembly areas, and a buffer station in front of the casting bed. This way, outfitting work can start well before reaching the upper basin, where this will be completed. Production of the standard elements will start in the two rebar assembly halls, assuring factory-like conditions. We optimize the halls for maximum efficiency and safety. The reinforcement bars will enter the hall already cut and bent to size. Skilled fixers and welders, operating two shifts a day, will start assembling the reinforcement for the bottom slab, following a robust and proven sequence. All reinforcement work will undergo extensive quality controls before moving on to the next station. The rebar cage will be skidded to the top slab assembly area, supported by both the lifting table and the launch scaffolding systems. Now, once the top slab is assembled, the completed rebar cage can be skidded to the buffer area, where additional works can be completed when necessary. Our approach allows the assembly of the next cage to commence without delay and thereby removes this process from the critical path. As soon as the bottom and external formwork is ready, the rebar cage will be lifted and skidded into the casting bed using specially designed inflatable rails. Our formwork process offers the significant advantage that the entire segment can be cast monolithically and without anchors in the external walls. This continuous casting operation requires the production and distribution of 100 cubic meters of concrete per hour, on average. Stripping the bottom formwork will start. The segment will then be pushed into the curing area by a robust skidding process. Outfitting work can already start in the curing hall and continue in this extended work area, thus boosting efficiency and robustness. The remaining outfitting will take place once the element is completely pushed in the upper basin. The first marine operations are the floating up and tugging out of the elements. This will be different for standard and special elements. After floating in a special truss pontoon and closing all gates, the basins will be filled up. First, the standard elements will be winched to the lower basin according to a precise winching sequence. Followed by the special element, which will first be lifted by the truss pontoon to give it extra lift to float. After aligning the water levels, the floating gate will be removed. The standard elements are tugged out underneath two immersion pontoons. The two pontoons will swiftly hook up to the four hoisting toes so that the element is ready to be towed out of the harbor following a strict procedure. Now, the last phase of the marine works can start. The immersion of the elements into their final position. 
As each new element arrives on location above the tunnel trench, the immersion pontoons will be anchored. Six anchor wires will connect to anchor buoys, a seventh to an unembedded bollard on the roof of the preceding tunnel element. Now, immersion can really start. As soon as the new element approaches the preceding element, transponders will guide it into position until the catcher on the bulkhead of the new element connects with the pin on the preceding element. Finally, the Gina seal will be aligned and the water pumped out. Hydrostatic pressure will exert over 10,000 tons of force, compressing the seal. Last marine operation. Placing the locking fill and protection layers will be executed by a spreader pontoon and a directionally controlled immersed diffuser. First placing the backfill, followed by two protection layers. Our proposed marine operations will benefit substantially from a string of new yet proven technologies. By rationalizing equipment, they will be intrinsically faster, safer and more robust.